and welcome to the OHSAA sectional tournament division three. We are at Lima Central Catholic and it is time for the finals. It's been an action packed day all throughout the day. The top four finishers in each weight class are moving on to next week's districts and we are kicking things off with finals. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Brady Overhaul and Brady, we've got 106 on the mat right now. Yeah, yeah, only uh, I think four guys in this weight class, but uh, the top two made it here to the finals. Um, looks like uh, bo both were pretty good records. Uh, Myers from Allen East is 26 and 11, and uh, Silas Riblet from Ada is 27 and 11. So real close as far as records go. So you can see that's Myers with the green strap, I believe. Is it green? No. Yes, the, green yep. strap and Riblet with the red strap. We are 0-0 here in the first period. Yeah, yeah. Myers looks like uh, Allen East just got a takedown. Uh, so he's up two now, uh, trying to stay in control here and try to start Allen East off with a win. I'm, I'm, we haven't seen an updated score, but I'm, I would venture to say Allen East is close to the top, if not on on top for the day at the at the tournament. We also know that Columbus Grove has had a very good season as well. I had a chance to chat with one of the the fathers of one of the uh, wrestlers. Also commented that Columbus Grove has had a good day too. Top four moving on to districts. So we've got Myers and Riblet. Regardless of how this ends, they're moving on, as is Holgrieve and Thompson. Yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, uh, this is the only match actually at 106. It looks like the, the uh, third place match is already over. And like we said earlier, there's only four guys total. So mm. really all four are moving on no matter, no matter what it looks like. You know, part of that I suppose could be the fact that this is the 106 weight class, which you're going to have fewer guys weighing that at this point in their life in high school. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of odd. It's it's always the uh, lightest and heaviest are kind of the lower <laughs> weight classes. So, uh, so it just kind of tends to be like that from year to year. But as uh, we get some back points here from uh, Myers as well to go into the second period, up should be five zero. Looks like he's got the two. Oh, so only two. Yep, now only it's two. Four zero. And there's the uh, hit on the back of the ref. So we are at the end of period one, and Allen East is leading 4-0. Yeah, pretty pretty good control that whole period. He, he got the takedown early on and kind of just stayed in control and got a, set a near fall there for two towards the end of the first period to go in 4-0 in the second period. So Ada starting out on top. Myers trying to get that escape. Yep, good quick reversal there. Uh, looks like almost. He hasn't got control yet to get his two. Trying um, for that leg. Is that the key to getting control? Yeah, he's trying to get that. Ada's trying to keep that leg, and there's the two. So a reversal for uh, Myers to go up 6-0 now early on in the second period. 137 left to go in period two. Myers of Allen East is up 6-0. Vying for a first place finish here at sectionals. He and Riblet, as well as Holdgreave and Thompson, are on their way to districts next week. And is that in Troy? Yeah, yep. D Division three uh, for them is in Troy. And uh, and yeah, you know, we're going to see a totally different. We talked about the small weight class here, but but uh, we were talking before the broadcast. Once you get to uh, districts, their full 16-man brackets. Mm -hmm. for, for some of you not familiar, the top four and and fo top four placers in four different sectionals all come to one district in Troy. So. We're going to see a whole new elevation level next weekend. <laughs> All right. Both guys are out of bounds. One minute left to go in period two. Officials bringing him back into the center. And you mentioned earlier, you're right, though, with uh, Grove. They did have a real good year. In fact, they, they ended up uh, winning the their uh, the division conference. Uh, they did beat Allen East, so... I think Allen East kind of has control that the past four or five years, and Grove, Grove did real well. Well, and I'll even say nothing, you know, we're, it's, it's always great to see any team do well, but we were a bit shocked even at the station. We're just so, the TV station, we're so used to Allen East dominating things uh, to see Grove come out on top of their conference. Uh, they've really been building that program year after year. Yeah, they didn't necessarily have a ton of champions. They just had a good, solid entire lineup with, uh, with, with a lot of placers to help them win that title this year, so. 25 seconds, 24 seconds left in period two. Our score still is 6-0. Myers of Allen East with the lead at the moment. Yeah, sim similar to per period one. He uh, got his reversal here and has kind of controlled, uh, rode, rode out this, or Riblet this entire period to, to go into the third uh, period. With 
relatively close match, but in a sense, not so much as far as the controls been Myers for the most part. And that's the end of period two. Score remains 6-0. Myers of Allen East in the lead over Riblet of Ada. Myers came in as the top seed. Riblet the number two seed. Myers with a 26-11 record coming in and Riblet 27-11. So some similarities there as far as record goes. Yeah, course. yeah. It looks like, uh, well, I'm just looking at some last year's stats. Uh, uh, Myers actually wrestled uh, uh, one of six last year as well and, and got fourth here. So, so you know, what a jump from fourth last year to trying to win one here this year and start Allen East off with a, with a champion off the bat. Absolutely. So he's a junior. So he's had a couple years to really see how this goes. He's wrestling against a freshman. Um, that is really something to say about coming from fourth to wrestling for first shows what he mentally did in this past year. Right, he's definitely uh, you know elevated his wrestling level, and, and honestly, you know, you don't see many 106 pound juniors. So the fact that he <laughs> right. can keep that weight uh, and, and stay there, that's going to really set him up well for this district run as well. Um, so he has gotten two more points. Point now, the score now is eight to zero. We have just over a minute left in this third period. So similar here, uh, you know, he's looking for uh, at least one more uh, maybe set of near fall here to, to really seal that uh, win and, and keep him with a major decision. Uh, just like the first two periods, once he gets on top, he, he rides really well and stays in control. So it's going to be a tough task for Riblet to really be able to do much of anything. with. 45 seconds left in this period. You are watching the 106 weight class, and this is the championship final. We are vying for first and second place here. The winner will be your sectional champion. 30 seconds left to go in the third period. Yeah, so again, here's, here's he's going for that near fall, that possible quick turn here with the, uh, he's got a wing locked in and and just settle back a bit. You can hear Coach Abby from all the way up here. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty distinct voice. He's I, been around for a long time. I and... really enjoy wrestling coaches. I love watching <laughs> the enthusiasm, the passion, all of that that comes out here yeah. on the side of the Yeah, and he's, a, the he's been around for a long time, a r real good uh, ambassador of wrestling for the area. So, so. Well, that does it. Your sectional champion in the 106 weight class is oh, Myers of Allen East. Winning eight to nothing, you're watching the sectional tournament division three from Lima Central Catholic right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Division Three Sectional Tournament at Lima Central Catholic. Tonight's event is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima. Walpock and Delphus call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. We've moved into the 113 weight class, and we have Nia Hodge Miller of Spencerville against Parker Will of Delphi St. John's. Yeah, these guys have uh, seen each other quite a bit through the year, with Nia always uh, coming out with the win. So, uh, again, uh, you mentioned uh, we have a senior here wrestling a freshman. So, so uh, two, two in a row here with a junior or senior in the lower weight classes, which, uh, again, you don't have many seniors at the 113-pound weight class. So. Definitely a tough task for uh, Parker Will here coming in uh, as just a ninth grader. So score already at this point with 120 left in the first period is 2-0. Hodge Miller, I believe, with he, the lead. I looked yeah, down and yeah, I didn't yeah, see yeah, what happened. He, yeah, he got a takedown there and uh, good scramble to begin with by Will, but uh, Hodge just kept attacking and uh, got a takedown. So, And he actually comes from last, he was the returning state, cha or state champion, returning sectional champion from last year at the same weight class. So... Looking to repeat uh, to get himself a high place here going into uh, districts. Yeah, really, how is that working? Because we know there's four that are making it. So it's Hodge Miller, Will, uh, West, Westgirtis, Westgirtis, and Mag. They're all moving their way on, but how's the placing go based on the it, finals here? So it, it's, you know, it's a definitely important. You want that higher seed. So what will happen next week is all one seeds will wrestle four seeds. Uh, so, so whoever wins this has an advantage because they're going to be wrestling a fourth seed from another uh, section. So it, it's definitely uh, key to try and get that first place. Um, second seeds will wrestle third seeds. So, mm -hmm. so there definitely is a difference from that first to, first to uh, second place, at, at least at the district level. Of course they know that going in as well. Right. They're fully aware of what they're going to be facing in the next level. Five seconds left in the first period. 
official is watching. Yeah, it looks like he's going. He's got a set of, of time. yeah, got a set of three more near faults. So he'll go in five to zero into period two. All right, period two in our 113 weight class has Hodge Miller up 5-0 over Parker Will. And this was another smaller weight class. I believe uh, five guys in this class. So, so all but all but one are, are advancing uh, through to the uh, district tournament next week as well. And Brady, you said when we talked earlier, that's going to change next week. We go from these very small weight classes to to, to district level. It's going to be a full fledged right, right bracket. Yeah, you really start to see the wrestling next week, and and uh, some of the top teams in the state in Division Three come to Troy. So so it, it's going to be a tall task for a lot of these guys. So. Hopefully they get a few of them out, you know, to Columbus uh, next week. And, and again, that higher place here is, is just just helps them further along for next week as well. Saw some fast feet movement there. Parker Will there trying to move his way around. Didn't quite make his way out of that hold though. Yeah, he definitely, you know, trying to fight, not give up any more back points. Uh, so doing a good job at not giving those up. He just has to make something happen to, to try to get himself either an escape or or a reversal to get some points on the board. One minute left in period two. It's still 5-0 in favor of Spencerville. The senior from Spencerville is up 5-0. Yeah, it looks like he just got a reversal as well now. So kind of extended his uh, lead by two more. So uh, with about 45 seconds left, I'm guessing he's going to try to ride this period out and maybe go for, go for a turn here to get a few more points, but nothing too crazy to give up anything. 36, 35 seconds left in the period. Hodge Miller continues to be on top, but not a lot of other action otherwise. Yeah, relatively similar to that first match. Uh, he's got himself control and then, and then kind of staying, staying on top here and just uh, trying to you know, play it somewhat safe to, to just be careful here as he's going for a turn here, which is going to be trouble for Will. Oh, there we go with 10 seconds left in the second period. Hodge Miller gets the pin. He repeats as your sectional championship, or sectional champion, in the 113 pound weight class. You're watching the Division III sectional tournament from LCC, right here on WOSN. One twenty pound weight class brings us Corbin Kibble of Wayne Trace and Tyler Overman of Coldwater. Though we're not jumping into this match quite as quickly as the other ones. Is that because we're waiting for another match to yeah, be done? Yeah, yeah. So they're, uh, this is actually the first weight class that's happened to where uh, the third place matches lasted longer than our championship match. So, so uh, once we get to this sectional level, they don't start a new weight class until that entire last weight class is through. So. So we're not we're not videoing it, but a battle over on uh, the third place uh, mat between uh, Trent West Gerties from Coldwater and uh, Graydon Mag from Columbus Grove. You know, actually, if you want Cassidy. Can you point your camera over that way? We might as well take a focus on what's happening here um, since we are waiting for the 120 to start. You said this is 113, this is West Gerties and Mag. Unfortunately, I don't know where our score is right now. Yeah, it looks like right now uh, it's four to two with about 40 seconds left. Uh, and who's on top? Looks like uh, Mag is winning. Right now, up, up. Uh, well, now six to two, seven to two, eight to eight two. Eight to two. As, eight as to he two. got a reversal and a set of back points, so this should uh, wrap things up here with a six-point lead, with about 20 seconds left for a third-place finish for Mag from uh, Grove. From Grove, yeah. He is a freshman wrestling another freshman. We've already been talking about a lot of that today with these freshmen making their way, launching themselves into the world of high school wrestling. Yeah, and it's good, you know, all, all these guys are gonna make it because the weight classes at 106 and 113 were small, but definitely some good experience to let them one more, you know, keep their wrestling season alive for at least one more week. All right, that's a finish of eight to two in the third place match with Columbus Grove getting the win, Mag over West Gerties from Coldwater. Now we move on to the 120 pound championship. Corbin Kimmel, a sophomore from Wayne Trace versus Tyler Overman, also a sophomore from Coldwater. Yeah, so 
uh, Kimmel from Wayne Trace had a real good year last year as a freshman. He uh, he was actually the champion at 106 here and then uh, got to districts and also got to state. And not only did he get there, he ended up placing eighth at state last year. So, As so, a freshman. Yeah, as a freshman. In the 106 weight yeah, class. So, so he's gained some weight, moved up here into the next weight or two more weight classes. Yeah, so he, he's uh, – He's trying to, you know, get another uh, sectional championship here to make it two in a row and early takedown for him to lead 2-0 already. Our, our camera operator was commenting on his singlet. We don't see a lot that look quite like that, the American flag. Yeah, yeah, Wayne Trace has, you yeah, know, they've, uh, they, they definitely support <laughs> that red, white, and blue. I've seen it years ago, they had some, some colorful singlets as well. So I think uh, they're expecting a lot from him again this year. And, so our score right now is 2-1. It's Kimmel up with two. But Overman does have one point. Yeah, and Overman also only a sophomore. He had a good season as well last year and actually, uh, again, got to uh, districts himself. And not only did he get there, he ended up placing six that diff districts. Now, only top four move on to state, but he, he did place top six. So that does carry, you know, pretty, pretty uh, – pretty solid himself so well and anytime you put someone like a freshman into that situation mentally they see what's happening they know what's going to take to get to state and that can really launch them to be prepared for what they're going to do in the next few years yeah you know we we've seen a lot of the younger kids at the first two weight classes but these two guys as only being sophomores they both have quite a bit of uh, experience just by both being district qualifiers last year and placers so Two more points for Kimmel. The point score now is 4-1 with 30 seconds left to go in the first period. All right, so I see, oh, we may have a, like a, an injury yeah. uh, uh, situation here. Possible injury there, but I think it looks like he's okay to... <laughs> I saw the official point toward his head, so there was a probably a, a potential dangerous. Right, right, right. Fall. Potentially dangerous there to bring him back to the middle. Fifteen seconds left in the first period, actually down to about ten. Our score still is four one. Wayne Trace with the lead. Kimmel with four. Overman with one. Yeah, Overman. Oh wow. Big uh big Take down take for down, the third, down third place, place match that you yeah. didn't see right now. I just heard the thud. So it looks like Coldwater's deferring second period, and uh, Wayne Trace has chosen to go down. Last year, Overman was, we, we already mentioned Kimmel was uh, 106 last year. Overman was 113. He placed third here last mm. year. So, again, both, both district qualifiers and both trying to get this win because, as we mentioned earlier, that first place is such an advantage when uh, compared to second when you get to uh, Troy next week. All right, Kimmel not – well, there he goes. I was going to say he was not getting his way back over, but as soon as I said that, <laughs> he did it. Yeah, got a reversal for two, so that puts him up 6-1 to one now. 130 left in the second period. Kimmel 6, Overman 1. Kimmel comes in with a 31 and 6 record. Overman with a 32 and 12 record. Yeah, a lot of these schools see each other quite a bit. Uh, we see the Spencervilles, the Allen East, but uh, it's good to see uh, the Coldwaters and Wayne Trace. They don't necessarily see each other as much as some of these more what I consider local, local teams like the Delphuses and the Spencervilles. So a lot of these first few matches, these guys have battled each other quite a bit. These two guys, mm. I don't think have really seen each other much this year. So. Well, we noticed I saw Kimmel pick him up and get Overman down, but no points there, so he didn't have a control. Uh, he's, yeah, he's already in. Yeah, if he was already on top, so he already had got the two uh, earlier. So he's just maintaining control. So, and at this point, the only way he can get points is by doing some type of turn for some back points. Forty-two seconds left in the second quarter. Officials bringing them back to the center of the mat since they were out of bounds. So yeah, Kimmel just trying to keep that, he's got that arm bar pretty tight there, trying to go for a turn and, and just not give any any escapes or reversals up to get into period three with a solid lead. Overman though is uh, looking to be very determined not to let him do that. <laughs> yeah, he's, tr he's he's definitely battling and trying to get, get it one here with about 15 seconds left here in period two.
10 seconds left in the period. Still 6-1 is our score with Wayne Trace in the lead. Almost no, no loss of control yet, so he's going to keep control and go into the period three, up 6-1 still. So at this point, what should Overman be thinking about being down five points with just two minutes left well, to go in this match? I'm guessing he's going to choose top or neutral. He he's, hasn't really had much luck, and you see he just chose top because he's got to get some type of points. So he's going to go for some back points here, and, and, and really he needs to hit, hit a five-point move to either tie it up or, or to pin him in a, in a sense being down by five. So this is where it gets rough, though, because if, if Kimmel gets his escape, that six points is really a, a difference because the, the takedown and the set of three back points won't, get, won't give enough for uh, Overman. And watching the ref to see no points given there. No loss of control yet, oh, and there, there we he just go. gave it. Yeah, so that's he gave a loss of control for two more for uh, Kimmel to go up eight to one. Eight to one with 122, 121 left to go in the third period. This is the 120 weight class watching for the first place sectional championship. Yeah, and this is our third period in a row here, or third match in a row here, where we've seen some, some good riding time. There, there's no riding time points like there are in college in the uh, high school level, but uh, some good riding uh, times by some of these uh, wrestlers once they maintain that control on top and have a good lead. To over in the third place match, which you're not seeing at the moment, that one's just about over and that's going to end 4-0 with... Uh, Looks like Gavin Grubb from Crestview is going to win uh, that match. 38 seconds left to go in this first place match. Score is 8-1, Corbin Kimmel with 8 points. Oh, the third place match just finished. As we mentioned, Crestview got the win for that. And over here, Wayne Trace is keeping a solid uh, lead. He's got that bar in, maybe working for a turn, or, or just kind of keep keep it keep control to to get himself an eight to one uh, decision here. Eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds, five, four. Just about finished with this match. 120 pound weight class. And there it is, your sectional champion in this 120 pound weight class is Corbin Kimmel from Wayne Trace. Moving next into the 126 pound weight class, we have the number one seed, Brady Hamilton from Coldwater, a freshman wrestling the number two seed, Brayden Kahn, a sophomore from Parkway. Yeah, so both guys come in with pretty good records here. Uh, Neither were champions last year, but but looking here, it looks like uh, I don't believe either of them made it to districts last year. Well, so Brady's a freshman. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Brady's a freshman, so definitely did not. And uh, looking here from last year's stats, it doesn't look like uh, he got out to Con, got to uh, districts either. So so definitely all, all, both getting there this year. Hamilton with a 29 and 11 record coming into sectionals. Khan with a 29 7 record. You know, thinking about how fast the wrestling season goes, it's a lot of matches. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work in a short period of time. Yeah. Some of these, and some of these guys, when next week they're going to see guys that have upwards of almost 50 matches. It's kind of gotten crazy because. Because years ago, you only had around 25 matches or so total. Now, now it's pretty common to have almost 40 matches or so, which both of these guys do. One minute to go in the first period, just over one minute. We still are scoreless in this 126 pound weight class. Over on the third place mat right now, which again, you're not seeing, but it is a 2-0 lead right now, four. Got to check and see who's got what. What it Looks like uh, Thompson from Grove, I believe, right now has the two point lead. So that's Thompson versus Gerardo. Columbus Grove versus Crestview for that third to fourth place match, which of course the top four are moving on to districts regardless of how this turns out. They know they are moving on to next week. Yeah, and that was always, you know, coaching and wrestling, it was always, this is when the point of the season really gets fun, you know, you, <laughs> your, your practice rooms get a little smaller, everyone's focused. Uh -huh. uh, you get out of school uh, at least a half day or a full day on <laughs> Friday next week to because uh, the district tournaments are two day tournaments, so. 
Next week is where that, you know, midday through Saturday where the matches get really exciting because it's those go-to matches for to get to state that, that really have everyone on, their ed on, on, on the edge. Not just the uh, wrestlers, but the parents and the moms. You know, I'm a sports <laughs> yeah. mom. I, I'm with you moms out there who's <laughs> just watching your kids and you just want them to do so well. Well, we finished the end of period one. It is still scoreless. Um, this is our first match with a scoreless first period. Right, yeah. So far, we've had quite a bit of action in the first period, and this one, yeah, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. So this is where that decision of, of choosing top, bottom, neutral, deferring come, really comes into play. So it uh, looks as if uh, Coldwater deferred and uh, Parkway chose down. So it's important for Parkway to try to get an escape or a reversal, and at the same token, it's important for Coldwater to just try to maintain control and go into a period three, either 0-0 zero, zero still or possibly up if you can get a turn. Is that why the wrestler would choose down? I mean, in my non-wrestling mind, I'm thinking, why do you want somebody on top of you? But that way you can get that right. escape and right. you can yep. get the point? Yep, exactly right. You know, in a close match like that, it becomes even more important. Uh, a lot of times they'll defer. We talked about that uh, one other time when we were hosting some matches at WBLs a week or two ago. And, and they defer so that they can then have choice that third period. So... So right. this is that first match where, yeah, that, that definitely uh, plays into an uh, effect of, of what you're choosing and kind of what type of strategy you want to take. Coldwater trying to pull the wing, not being as successful yeah. as probably intended. Yeah, and he definitely needs to be careful here. He's getting a little high, and Parkway, you can see, is trying to shake him off to, to get a, oh, get look a at reversal, that. There and we he go. just did. Two so. points right there. So Parkway is on the board now, 2 nothing. as we've got 48 seconds left to go in the second period. That could be a really big thing that just happened in this match. Yeah, uh, yeah, and right there you, you can see uh, Coldwater's coach has taken him to the table. Uh, I would agree with Coldwater's coach here. He was he was not fleeing. He was trying to get an escape. Ah. Uh, so, so... He, he did not get the call. He went to a second official, uh, so he, he did not. So what is it? Explain to me what he was um, questioning. Right so, so Coldwater's coach thought that he got an escape, uh, but the ref was basically saying, you no, know, they were already out of bounds, so no escape. So, mm. oh, so right Parkway stayed he, in control. He, yes. He blew the yep. whistle. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. And that would have made it 2-2. Two, 2-1. Two. Uh, two to one. Or 2-1, two okay. Yep, he would have got an escape for one. So, so I, yeah, that was, that was a close one. And, Unfortunately for these coaches, <laughs> there's no instant replay. So, But we are now 2-2. Two, two. Uh, yeah, quick reversal by Coldwater with about 25 seconds left in period two. So so this match is going back and forth, back to 2-2. Two to two, And we mentioned this third period is definitely going to play effect on uh, on this score here and what Parkway is going to want to choose. 126-pound weight class is what you're watching right now. The championship round between Brady Hamilton, a freshman from Coldwater, and Braden Kahn, a sophomore from Parkway. The score is 2-2 with 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds left in period two. And it's starting to get loud in here. <laughs> oh, and he's going for some back points. And I, he, I think you see he does have two, so that's going to be huge going into the last period. So Coldwater came up with two more back points to make it four to two into period uh, three. Well, after a scoreless first period, we've had a pretty action-packed second period. Yeah, and Coldwater is down, and uh, there he's chosen down. So this is where Parkway's really going to have to either work a turn or then get it, let him go and, and try to work takedowns. So the cheering that you're hearing is actually for the third fifth place match. Um, that I think may have just ended in a pin. Spencerville guy is over there checking on his opponent, which is always nice to see the sportsmanship. And yeah, yeah, we just had a big uh, Big take throw down and takedowns here by Coldwater, and he's even going for the pin, so. We are in the third period with 1.45 left to go. Three so. pack points there, so suddenly we went from scoreless in period one to nine to two in favor of Coldwater with 145 left in the third period. Yeah, good good quick throw there by Coldwater to get a reversal and three set of back points to really uh, almost put this match out of reach. So if you're Parkway, you now pretty much have to go for a mm -hmm. pin or, or uh, uh, otherwise you, you're not going to get the win, but you're just down by too many points here. Not quite to the minute mark yet. Still 120 left to go in this third period. 
But as Braden and I were mentioning, big, big changes since this started and Coldwater with a strong advantage at the moment. Yeah, and you can kind of see Coldwater's coach uh, kind of look motion, just stay there, uh, just keep control and stay there and let time run out. And he's going for some another set of back points here, but Parkway's trying to fight that off, but again, it's going to be very tough from this situation with Coldwater uh, with the leg. You see he's got the legs in there, so he's going to he's going to be happy to just try and ride this match out and keep a seven-point lead. Just down to about 45 seconds to go left here in the third period. You are watching Division Three sectional action at Lima Central Catholic. And we're grateful that you are joining us. Don't forget that you can also watch us on the go on the WOSN app for just a $100 donation that gets you a full year's worth of WOSN on the app. And you can watch, you and all the grandparents and everybody all over the country can watch events just like this one every single day. So Coldwater got called for stalling. No points given there. The first stalling call is just a warning. The second one is actually a point, but at, at, at where, where they're at right now, I, I think the coaches are okay with that stalling call. To so what was that just, just happened? That was a So that was now a caution. Looks like Coldwater maybe moved a little early is what the, they're shown there. And again, the first one is no points, just a warning. Uh, the, the second, third one is where the points could start to add up. But, but with the lead that he has with only about 10 seconds left, he not, not really much changes here in the match as far as that goes. And we're down to five, four, three seconds left. And there we go. Your 126 pound weight class sectional champion is Brady oh, Hamilton from Coldwater. Brady Hamilton of Coldwater. You're watching the Division Three sectional wrestling finals right here on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Moving down to the 132 pound weight class, it's senior Carter Miller of Spencerville versus Edward Kesson, a freshman from Delphus St. John's. Yeah, and this is one of those matches I had circled. This is gonna, this is gonna be a good one. Both guys are really, I, I know, we mentioned one's only a freshman, but he's uh, got a huge family background. Uh, his dad was a real good wrestler in high school and state uh, placer. Uh, and, and Miller himself comes from a big wrestling background family as well with some uncles that were for, were some state champions. So this is one that could, could really uh, be a close match. We haven't really seen too many close so far today. And this one, I think we're going to get that. And we have a senior versus a freshman, but I think the thing to remember in wrestling is, you know, this is not this freshman's first go around with big matches. The way the wrestling world goes, he's been doing this for a very long time. Yeah, and actually, he's he's uh, kind of he's got Miller's number. I believe he beat Miller once already this year, at least once this year. Uh, so, so yeah, this is not not what you would think of a typical uh, freshman as far as the experience goes. Uh, with Kesson. One's from Spencerville, the other one's from Delphi St. John's, almost neighbors basically, mm -hmm. if you think about it. So I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Miller's been knowing for a while who is coming up into, uh, into the competition. Yeah, I think these two uh, kind of knew that they'd see each other here in the finals and they, and they honestly could have a decent chance of even seeing each other again next week. I think these two both have a pretty legit opportunity to get themselves to uh, Columbus and, and place at Districts as well next week. Carter Miller with a uh, Record of 40 and 2, Edward Kesson 32 and 7 here in the 132 pound weight class. Yeah, Miller was a champion here last year at 126 pounds. And again, we already mentioned that Kesson's only a freshman. So uh, both uh, Miller here is going for his uh, second straight uh, sectional championship. And Kesson's trying to start off his uh, four year career uh, with a sectional champion right away at, uh, as a freshman. Well, we're nearing the end of period one, and we are still at zero. Of course, in the 126-pound weight class, it was like that, but... Um, yeah. Oh! Good. Whoa! Very good. Wait, wait, Miller did really well uh, uh, not giving up that two, because that could have that would have been a real big deal with this, how close this match is going to be. Zero, zero at the end of the first period. Carter Miller, Delphi St. John's. I'm sorry, Riley Mueller's Delphi St. John's, that'll be next. Carter Miller's Spencerville. 
and Edward Kesson, Delphi St. John's. So Kesson is in the blue, Miller is in the red. Yeah, so Kesson uh, chose down here. Uh, so again, Miller's just trying to keep this uh, match close. Uh, not, not allow an escape or, or a reversal so he can go into period three, uh, choosing down and trying to get that escape. Miller there with the attempt takedown, but uh, Kesson right, right ready to bounce back up. Yeah, yeah, this one's gonna, this one's gonna stay close. We, we, we mentioned a few times and uh, Miller just got called for stalling there, uh, which again, that first stalling call is just a warning but that could uh, play a factor if, if another one uh, comes because then it becomes a point. Now I can f understand stalling in our last match where it was 92 and he wants to ride out the time, but what was the purpose in stalling with, with that? Yeah, there? that was called pretty quick. Uh, I think he was trying to work something, but, uh, but the ref didn't see it that way, so it gave him a warning. Uh, he, he definitely did not want, want to get that call. Uh, so you see now he gave up the, he, he basically gave him the escape. And there's a takedown. And some back points. Oh, wow. Look at this. Kesson is up by, was up. Now he's down. Now it's 2-1 with Miller in the lead. Yeah, it's actually now even going to be, looks like he gave three, him one, two. 3-1, 4, yeah, four one. yeah, he gave him two back points as well. So that's huge. With as close as this match is going to be, three points might not seem like a lot, but in this match it really is. He got 50 seconds left to go in period two. Suddenly a big change with Miller taking that lead 4-1 over Kesson. How quickly things can change. It's really amazing how just in a right. one foot move, it can all be different. Yeah, he had a real good inside trip there and went right to back and, and got a quick uh, two uh, back points as well. So, so yeah, this match is living up to definitely what, what uh, I think a lot of fans here were thinking and hoping for. Miller's now just trying to keep control and, and not, not give up anything else and play it smart. You don't want to give up a takedown here for Miller. An escape is okay, which he just did. Uh, escape is is definitely better and maybe move to our feet here. Now he's up four to two with Kesson just getting that uh, one point escape. A little less than 30 seconds to go left here in period two. And as Brady just said, score is four two. Spencerville's leading. The senior has four and the freshman has two in this championship sectional match. Yeah, and you don't want to give up two here if you're Miller. You want to try to keep that two point lead if you can and out of bounds, so no two was given. So they got eight seconds to go left. They're gonna move back into the center. Can they do much in eight seconds? I mean, I know you can uh, get a pin in eight seconds, but these guys, uh, yeah. Yeah, eight, let's, look, looks like uh, maybe some blood on Kesson. Uh, so, so eight seconds left uh, with them neutral. So Kesson's definitely going, if you're Miller, you're trying to just get, get out of this period still up four to two, because you have choice third period. If you're Kesson, you really need to get that takedown going into third period. Our third place match right now is a active one, but it's almost over 6-3 is the score right now. And that is between Schroeder, Schroeder of Columbus Grove and Hamilton of Coldwater. And it looks to me that, quick peek on who is red and who is green. Looks like Grove is red. So Hamilton, Coldwater is up 6-3 at the moment. That is the third place match, if I'm reading things correctly here. Yeah, 132. Yeah, and you notice that was, uh, looks like the fifth seed and third seed. So, so fifth seed, uh, you know, coming in and getting himself a, a berth to the sectional tournament or district tournament as well. We are back in uh, session now in the third period for our first place. Uh, matchup here between Miller and Kesson. Score still is 4-2. So yeah, so Kesson just gave him an escape. He let him up. Uh, basically what he's saying is, I think I can beat you on our feet. Uh, so now it's 5-2 with uh, Miller Miller up, but uh, Kesson's really going to come after him here this last period. 145 left to go in this third period. Kesson's in the blue. Miller is in the red. I personally really like the fact that his last name's on the back of his singlet. I appreciate <laughs> helps, yes. that. That helps, helps me out. out. <laughs> yeah, so Miller here is just, you know, not wanting to give up any throws, kind of kind of uh, just trying to stay locked here with, and, and basically defend that those takedowns from Kesson. Oh, and there's two a, points and then a one-point escape. So that puts us at 6-4. Yeah, 6-4. So Miller's trying to keep that leg and try to get a takedown to seal it. Kesson just... Uh, is, if he gives it up, that's going to be a tough challenge for Kesson. If, 
if he can keep from giving up that uh, takedown, well, then we're going to really have a nice final minute here. And we are just below a minute now, 55 seconds left to go in this match, 132 pounds. Miller has six, Kesson has four. Two points going to Kesson. We have a tie matchup at 6-6. Six, six. So Miller here has to get an escape. If Miller can get the escape, uh, he goes up a point. Uh, so we're going to really come down to here this last 30 sec seconds. 30 seconds to go. The crowd is getting into this one. And there's an escape, so now he just has to hold on. He can't give up a takedown. Miller takes the lead by one point. 20, 18 seconds to go, Ooh, and they and that, are out of what bounds. What a throw by Miller, but they're out of bounds, and hopefully Kesson's okay. They went right into the coach's chairs. So 18 seconds, Miller's up by one. Uh, he can basically just try to... Not, I don't want to say stall this out, but just stay stay neutral. But he's already had that stalling warning. Right. So if he gets yeah, called he, for stalling, he's going to yeah, lose a point, right? right? He's, or, yeah, you know. he's going to have to. Yeah, he can't back up. He's going to have to go after him, and you know Kesson's coming for the throw. 17 seconds to go. 16 seconds to go. The screaming is intensifying here, and the fans are jumping. 10 seconds, 7 seconds, 5 seconds. No throw. If the throw happens, that's a take. And two points! Two points! Oh, wow. Wow! With time expiring, he got the two, so this match definitely lived up to uh, what I think a lot of fans were thinking, and what a good match. Look at the ending there between these two guys who know each other well. Went to the very last second, and Edward Kesson from Delta St. John's is your sectional tournament champion. You were right, Brady, that was exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I come driving here earlier, I, I thought, yeah, this is gonna be a match. And, and you see the how well they know each other there, you know, uh, Kesson's uh, dad is his coach and hugging him over there, and Miller's grandpa is his, his coach. So, so yeah, these guys definitely know each other and, and they battled a lot this year. I'm glad that we have that one on video because I'm gonna have to go back and watch that one again. Yeah, that was a good match. I, 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 I was, a lot of people thought that would kind of be the match of the, the uh, afternoon, and so far it definitely has been. 138 pounds is where we are now. We've got Riley Mueller of Delphi St. John's in the blue, the freshman against Justice Pope of Ottawa Glandorf, a senior. Yeah, so uh, we have fifth seed and third seed, so both of these guys had, had an upset earlier today, one knocking off the first seed and one knocking off the second seed. So That's pretty exciting right. for them. We've got the first seed wrestling the fourth seed for the third place uh, position. Uh, but as you said, fifth seed versus third seed. I'll bring the moms back up again. There's some happy mamas out there <laughs> that right. watch their kids move up in the ranks. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, definitely impressive by uh, by Mueller from uh, Delphi St. John's coming in at 22 and 17 and, and got himself uh, here uh, for going for a championship match. And it looks like an early takedown and some back points here for St. John. So he's going for the pin if he can. It's close. Well, so there, there it is. It is. Yep. That's our first pin. So that's the freshman from Delphi St. John's came in as a fifth seed and walks out of LCC today as your sectional champion. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna have the 144 pound weight class. You're watching the Division Three sectional wrestling finals at Lima Central Catholic right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Division Three sectional wrestling finals. Our event is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. A lot of people may not realize Lee's started right here in Lima. This is the place where it was launched. All right, let's launch into the 144 pound weight class. That brings us Hutch Ridenauer of Parkway, a senior versus Clayton McLean of Ada, a junior. Yeah, both guys have uh, pretty similar records here. 
Um, McLean looks like last year he wrestled 126 and took third place, so he is the district qualifier. Uh, I believe Reidenhauer, I don't believe, got out of uh, place last year. Well, he comes in the first seed. We've got first seed versus second seed here uh, wrestling today. Yeah, a lot of these weight classes have kind of stayed true to what they were seeded. A few, you know, a few haven't, as we just saw that last match wasn't, but uh, with the fifth seed actually winning. But a lot of them have been the first and second seed working their way through to get to the championship. Right, McLean there going for the leg. Didn't get it. Still uh, no. trying again. But they're back into the neutral position. I, I shouldn't even call what they're doing. The minute I say it, they change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you'll start to notice, and not yet, but but the styles start to change as uh, here, not here at the 144, but as we get into the into the upper uh, last couple weight classes, kind of a different style than the smaller guys. Zero zero is our score with 50 seconds left to go in period one. Ada McLean is in the purple. Bridenauer Parkway is in the grayish black singlet. Parkway is red on the board, and McLean of Ada is green. 30 seconds to go, still 0 0. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh, Ada just got a takedown as we were looking down and then back up, and he's up by two now. So McLean, with about 20 seconds left, is up 2 0 now. McLean comes in with a 36 and 8 record. Again, he is the number two seed right now with a 31 and 5 record as the number one seed here in the 144 pound weight class. Also heading to districts in this weight class, Zane Stepsholdy of Columbus Grove and Levi Grace of Crestview. They are wrestling over on the mat to our left, and that is 0 0 in the second period. Still period one here, uh, one second left, two to nothing. For Ada. Yeah, so they'll go into a period two with looks like choice is going to be for Parkway. He defers and Ada's choosing down. And as I know, we've talked before that deferring is so that he's kind of got the upper hand in the third period to decide what he wants to do. Yeah, yep, yeah. And, and that's kind of when I was coaching, you always kind of deferred. It. Unless the match was already a, a, a big point difference, you kind of wanted to wait till that third period. If it was already a big point difference, we'd just choose second try to make something happen. 2-0 is our score here in the second period with Ada leading over Parkway. Yeah, and we're to some of these these middleweights had quite a few guys. We started off with the smaller weights with only three, three, four, five guys in a weight class, but here 132, 138, and uh, all the way up through about one. 75 has 9, 10, 11 guys. So, so that took some effort to get so to this yes, point. A little, not not, a, not yeah. to downplay the, the earlier weight classes, but they really did have to wrestle yeah, their way to yeah, this yeah, point. Yeah, quite a few more guys. And, and again, we mentioned next week it's going to be all 16-man brackets. So next week's when it really, uh, you know, is full weight classes. But We're at 3 nothing. McLean did get an escape. So one minute left to go in the second period. Three points from McLean out of Ada. Zero points, Parkway, right now. Two more points now for McLean. So, yeah, he got an escape and now got a takedown for two, so going up 5 0 here. And we've got 45 seconds left to go in this period. Of course, uh, right now has got to be thinking he's about to, oh, I was going to say he's going to go in with zero points, but he did get one, uh, 4 1, but. Um, Going to have to be thinking through what he's going to do in this third period. Yeah, I think they had the score wrong. I think that was actually an escape for uh, yeah okay. for Ryan Howard well, earlier. Well, that's what I thought yeah, I saw yeah. too. Okay. And then a takedown for Ada. So it should be 5-0. Uh, no, no, no. I think they had it wrong oh. up there. It's 4-1. Yeah. It is 4-1. Yeah, okay. they had it as 5-0. So. All right. But, yep, they got it right now. So 4-1. to one, And stalling call was actually just called on bottom man. So sometimes it's, you know, if top man's still working. Then the bottom man, who's just maybe sitting there, is the one that gets the stalling call. Two seconds to go. Oh, something could have almost happened there, no, yeah. but the clock stopped it. Yeah, no, no points because of the clock. If the clock, if time wasn't running out, he would have got some back points there. Four-one is our score at the end of the second period. That's Ada with four, Parkway with one. This is the 144-pound weight class in the Division Three sectional wrestling finals here at LCC. So, I 
I think this. Okay, now we have a, a, a now we have a change again <laughs> on our score, and we are back to 5-0. That was after the uh, official made his way to the scorers table, so we are 5-0 now. So yeah, so I, well, and that's where it was confusion. And I <laughs> we need the replay. Yeah, we I need to rewatch this. Let's bring uh, up those well, cameras was, that we was, see was, in football now. Yeah, I was thinking. It's like okay, I think Ada got the escape and then takedown. So. So it is the third period, and the junior from Ada has the advantage right now over Ridenauer from Parkway, the senior. The score is 5-0. And now he's going for go. a throw and trying to get some back points here. And no back points, but at least a takedown for two more. And now he's letting him go and just going to kind of work takedowns on his feet. So it's 7-1, as we just saw the escape for Ridenauer. He did really get that point this time. Yes, we know that yes. that one really happened. Yes. But we are down to just over a minute left in this match. Yeah, it looks like McLean just now kind of going after him. He was working out of bounds there. He about got another takedown, so they're still neutral, though. Keeping a watch on the third place fin match, which finished, I believe Grace won that over Steckscholdy of Columbus Grove. Both will be moving on next week. However, here we are under a minute to go in this championship match. Seven to one remains our score. McLean with seven, right now with one. Yeah, and this is a point where uh, part, if you're Parkway, you have to do something. You have to go for some type of big move here. Otherwise, you're going to run out of time and, and not enough time to get some points back. So, Is there anything you can do in 44 seconds short of a pin to win this? Um, in this situation, it'd be pretty tough. You know, Yeah, that's where you kind of got to have some type of what we call like five-point pin move in your arsenal to, uh, you know, in, in case you get in a situation like you are. And now it's two more points for Ada. The score is 9-1 with 25 seconds left to go in this third period. And we're probably going to see Ava just, Ada just try to uh, ride, ride him out here uh, and just stay in control on top and, and finish with a 9-1 lead. So right now, McLean will both make their ways. Way, make their ways to districts next week, where I'm sure right now we'll be eager to redo things and start back over with the next section part of the tournament. Right, right, yep, yeah, he'll be seeing a third seed place from some other uh, sectional next week. Toss some clapping there from Clayton McLean, the junior from Ada is your sectional champion with a 9 1 win in the 144 pound weight class. We are moving right into the 150 pound weight class. This brings us the fourth seed, senior Sam Obener of Coldwater versus the three seed, Graydon Troth, a junior from Wayne Trace. Yeah, earlier today, both of these guys, uh, one, one beat the first seed and one beat the second seed, so. What an exciting yeah. moment for them. So yeah, so both these guys kind of, uh, you know, uh, upset uh, someone higher seated than they were to get themselves into the championship match here. Other uh, wrestlers who are making their way to districts next week in the 150 pound weight class, it is that one and two seed. Martin from Crestview and Pinks from Allen East, two names we do know well. Um, all four will be heading next week, but as we talked about seeding wise, those guys are going to go in with different seeds than maybe they had anticipated. Right, right, yeah. That that you know that first seed is such a such a big deal uh, compared to that four seed when you get to district. So, right now on the third place match, it's Crestview over Allen East at the present 2-0 with 16 seconds left in the first period. We've got one minute and 15 seconds left in the first period here in this championship match, and our score remains at the snake eyes. Yep, still 0-0. Zero, zero. So from Coldwater, Wayne Trace, would these two have uh, spent much time wrestling uh, against each other? I, I, I don't think so, not as much. Maybe maybe one or two times, but you know, definitely not in the same leagues and uh, in uh, relatively far, you know, about an hour or so apart. So, so I would say when we see teams like these two teams that we wouldn't consider necessarily right around the Lima area, um, you know, not really familiar with one another's wrestling styles or, or backgrounds. 40 seconds left to go in the first period. It kind of makes me feel like they used that first period to, to what, just test each other out yeah, and figure out yes. where their strengths and weaknesses might be. Yeah, just yeah, kind of feeling each other out and, and uh, you know, allowing that first period to, to decide, you know, what, what you want to choose here going into period two and three. 
23 seconds, 22 seconds here in the first period. Still zeros in this championship match for the 150-pound weight class. A little bit of an animated match going on over there in match three. It's still 2-0. Crestview leading Allen East. Probably not surprising with that number one and number two seed against each other. Right, yeah. And both of those guys, actually, Pinks last year was a, uh, from Allen East, uh, who's losing right now 4-0. to zero. He was a uh, district placer. He got six, so just missed out on getting to the state tournament last year. First period ends here in our championship match, and it is still 0-0 between Sam Oberner of Coldwater and Graydon Troth of Wayne Trace. So Wayne Trace is down. Coldwater will be up. I didn't see who actually made that choice. Yeah, uh, believe at this point, it Wayne Trace matter, did. And, <laughs> yeah, and he's now going to try to get an escape or a reversal here to get some of the first points on the board. Well, we've seen matches go one nothing, and that decides it. Maybe it's an escape that could be the only thing sometimes. Right, yep. So still nothing yet, and if it stays like this much longer, ref's probably going to call a, a stalemate to put him back in the neutral, or back in the middle. I'm telling you, they're some of the most unique positions in wrestling. Yeah, just like <laughs> just that, he, just like that they rolled up and uh, he got himself a reversal on two points. So so Wayne Trace, uh, uh, Graydon goes up here 2-0 with about halfway through the second period. Yeah, we got just over a minute left to go in the second period. And still not a lot of movement other than those muscles. I know they are working hard. Yeah, Wayne Trace is just trying to keep control and not not lose that two uh, points by giving up a reversal or or escape. 51 seconds left here in the second period. Score remains 2-0. Troth is a junior from Wayne Trace. Obener a senior from Coldwater. And Obener's really made Overman really made a jump up. It looks like last year he was wrestling all the way uh, down at one. 113. Really? Oh, oh no, oh, okay. I'm sorry, that's Overman. So okay, <laughs> another okay. Coldwater. I'm looking yeah. at two different Overgrim. Coldwater guys. Okay, like, Overgrim. wow, that was a that would have been <laughs> a was, big jump. <laughs> that was a lot of a lot of roast beef meals right. for a whole year. But no, we, this is Sam Obringer yeah. in 150. And currently up there over on top of Wayne Trace, but nothing moving yet to get anybody points. Oh, there you go. And there is a reversal, so they're gonna go into the third period here, tied two to Two, as long as nothing else happens with 10 seconds left. Eight, seven, six, almost to the end of the second period. Over there on the third place match, it's still 4-0 in favor of Crestview. Second and period ends, tied up here. We move into the third period, two to two. And this is where that choice becomes so important because t two to two, uh, an escape uh, by Obringer gives him a one-point lead if he can get out. And he is working on it. He's trying. He's got the legs. Had him extended for a moment. And this is where he's got to be careful not to get too high. And he's going for the turn. If he can get it there, that could... So would he maybe be looking for the escape and the reversal there? Yeah, yeah, one or the other. Yeah, which, yeah, either way, you know, he can get himself a point and, he, and right there there's he goes. the escape. He got it right so, there. So now he's up one. Obringer's up one, and uh, at this point, if you're Wayne Trace, you got to get the takedown, uh, to, which would put you back up by one. So. And we have 113 left on the clock. Update on that third place match. They are getting ready for the third period. Crestview leading Allen East seven to zero. One minute, 108 actually is what we have to go. It's still three to two. Oh, and oh. A good, that's called a shuck there by <laughs> Obringer. So good, good uh, takedown to put him up by two more. And, well, Wayne Trace is not stopping though. He just got a reversal to bring it back to five, four now. With uh, 45 seconds left in the match. So at, at this point, Wayne Trace has to get a turn to get some back points. And if not, uh, you're going to probably see his coach, uh, Clayman, who's been there a long time at Wayne Trace, 
tell him to let him go. Uh, to, even though he's going to give up a point, so he can then get a takedown to tie it back up. Because we are down to almost 20 seconds now in the third period here. Yeah, so yeah, as I just mentioned, so he let him up on purpose to give him a point, but now it allows him to go for a takedown to tie it back up. So a little bit of strategy there in that decision. 13 seconds left. They're back in the neutral position here in the center. We've so, seen matches turn fast. Yeah, Obringer just has to to stay neutral, and uh, Wayne Trace obviously has to go for a throw, which he did, and isn't going to get it and give Obringer the win. And that wraps it up. It's Coldwater with eight points to Wayne Trace's four. Eight to four. Sam Obringer is your sectional champion at the 150 pound weight class. In the 157 pound weight class, we have the number one seed Cade Wireman from Allen East versus the number two, pound, or number two seed Logan Mershman of Columbus Grove, but we don't see Logan Mershman at the moment. Yeah, it looks like he's defaulting out. I'm not sure if that's injury or, or what. So of course, both guys are gonna automatically move on next week. If and, there is, okay, yep. there we go. Cade Wireman, the senior from Allen East, decorated wrestler without a doubt. Yeah, we were we were just talking about it, you know, what what, it, what experience he has as a senior, third at state last year, and he's really going and trying to go for that state champion this just, uh, this year. So good luck to him next year at Districts, and he'll walk in as the one seed without even a finals match. There we go, Cade Wireman, the senior from Allen East, wins by default. He is your Division Three sectional champion right here at LCC. Coming up next will be the 165 pound weight class, which will bring us another Allen East wrestler against Wayne Trace. That is next. Welcome back to the Division Three sectional wrestling finals at LCC. There's no admission fee for you to watch this tournament, but there is a cost for TV44 and WOSN to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer supported WOSN by sending a financial gift right now. In fact, we are in our funding campaign effective in March. You can donate early if you'd like. We rely on donations from viewers to enable airing of this tournament and other locally produced programs. Go to wtlw.com forward slash donate or give us a call. This is the 165 pound weight class. Trenton Gatchel of Allen East versus Sam Moore of Wayne Trace, and we already have a no. It isn't. It's a zero-zero score. I'm looking at the raw. I was looking at the third-place yeah. scoreboard, which has a two-zero uh, advantage at the moment. Zero-zero right now. Yeah, and Gatchel's really put together a good season uh, this year. He uh, he ended last year just missing state. He got fifth at districts. So so I know Alan East isn't expecting a lot of a lot out of him, but. Uh, so uh, more from Wayne Trace is going to have his uh, work cut out, but he's he comes in with a good record too, as you mentioned, 30 and four. So it's really interesting now as we move into the 165 pound weight class. We see a different in physique. You know, Moore is tall, to where he gets some of his weight. Gatchel is strong. Both guys strong, but you can definitely see that's where his weight comes from to get them to this weight point. Yeah, Gatchel definitely has a strong lower body here, and once he gets in control, he. He, he rides real well and, and it's, you know doesn't give up control much once once he gains it. So so if you're more, you're definitely not wanting to give up a takedown uh, from Gatchel or let him get inside because he can hit a good double leg or, or good throws as well. Almost uh, 40 seconds now into the 30 seconds is marked to go here in the first period and we're still at 0-0. Zero, zero. Do you want to mention, I saw Trenton Gatchel's shirt when he's getting ready. He said, Jesus on the front. I like that shirt, Gatchel. I hope you keep wearing that a lot. 25 seconds left. Still 0-0 zero, zero here. The 165-pound weight class championship match. Yeah, stalling call. Looks like uh, uh, Moore was given one stalling call. And Gatchel now going for a takedown before time runs out. And we'll see if he can get it. And, uh, oh, almost nothing yet, though. Good. Oh, wow. That was a that was some fancy footwork to stay in bounds. Yeah, good good. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, good work by Moore to not give up that takedown. I thought Gatcho was going to get it there, and he scrambled pretty well to keep it tied zero zero. Four, three, two. We're just about to the end of the first quarter, and that wraps it up. Still zero zero here between Allen East, Trenton Gatcho of the Mustangs, and Sam Moore of Wayne Trace. 
Yeah, it looks like, let's see here, last year, uh, Gatchel was actually a champion 2000 or 21. Last year was a uh, runner up. And I believe uh, Moore, Moore was third place last year. So both guys already placed at sectionals and have both been to district. So some experience here between uh, Gatchel and Moore. So as we know, both of these are heading to districts. The other two in this white cross heading to districts. Chris Miller of Coldwater and Schroeder of Columbus Grove. They have not yet. So yeah, there their match is over. Um, so the first takedown here by uh, Gatcho to go up 2-0. And that was referencing the third place match that was over. This one very much is not over. It's 2-0 in the second period with 1-12 left on the clock. Yeah, I think there was a quick pin. I think we missed the uh, third place match. It was over pretty quickly. Of course, you can go to bombspage.com and you can see all the scores and all the action and everything that took place in this entire uh, tournament today. Yeah, a lot of guys will be checking out Bombs page uh, this afternoon and even uh, tomorrow because sometime mid, usually by uh, by around noon or so tomorrow, the district uh, brackets will be released. All, all sectional tournaments will finish up today, and then usually uh, some sometime mid Sunday, uh, the district brackets will be released, and that's where coaches start to strategize <laughs> and get ideas for for next week uh, at all the districts throughout the state. Okay, one point there going to uh, Moore for an escape. So we are 2-1 with Gatchel still up. 35 seconds left in the second period. Yeah, Moore's doing a good job of not not really letting Gatchel get in. You can tell he's kind of got a game plan of how to how to wrestle against Gatchel because he likes to get in and try to work some throws and double legs. And Moore's defended that well. The problem is though he's down one, so eventually he's got to create some type of offense to to get to, if he wants to get up. And he's got just about two minutes left to figure that out because we are at the end of the second period. Gatchel from Allen East remains in the lead, two points to one over Sam Moore of Wayne Trace. So Moore's choosing down, which is uh, obviously the right call because he's trying to get the escape to tie things up two to two. And then it's going to probably come down to whoever whoever can get the takedown. Well, uh, look at that. They've changed it to neutral. Yeah, so basically that's Gatchel saying, I'm not going to hold you down. I'm going to let you up and just go try for takedowns is what, what's happening now. So 2-2 two, two with a whole period left for one of them to try to get that takedown. Oh, so that's what happened there. He yeah. just basically yeah. deferred yep. that and yeah. then went ahead and gave him that that point. Yes. So we are now tied. Yeah, you, you can you can just basically show the ref and they you are basically conceding that point and, and going right to their feet. And there he goes, aiming toward the feet. Didn't get it. Ooh, Ooh a foot was out. God. Oh. I know he was trying to keep that toe in there. Yeah, that foot was out uh, originally. He tried to slide it back in, but <laughs> that's why that assistant ref is there to notice that the foot had already been out. 1.30 left to go in oh. the third period. I, okay, I was going to say there was a quick takedown there, but a caution was called, so they're going back to neutral. Caution because of the way he lunged? He, I think he went before the whistle, yeah, so he was cautioned for that. And this is not where Moore wants to be. So Gatchel just has to return him and try to get his uh, takedown here. If you're Moore, you just got to try to defend it and wait for a stalemate. 1-12 is on the clock. Just about one minute to go here in the third period. Still tied up between Gatchel of Allen East and Moore of Wayne Trace. So here soon, if nothing happens, we're going to get a stalemate. Gatchel's trying to come out the back to get his two, but I think a stalemate's probably going to be called. Oh, and, oh. oh he gave the two. Oh, he, two he's giving the two to uh, Moore. Yeah. Two points to Moore. Jumps out into the lead, 4-2, with 40 seconds left to wrestle in, the, in this match. So, yeah, I, you can see Coach Abby is not happy with that call. <laughs> uh, he's, he gave the two to Moore. Gatchel trying to get that... Uh, obviously, he's thinking, i got to get these two points. Yeah, now, he's yeah. He's to tie it here, 23 yeah. seconds to go. Now Gatchel's down two, so he's got to get uh, a reversal here. And he and gets the reversal. No. Oh. I don't see no the No reversal's points. been called yet, yeah. we got 10 seconds to go here. Moore's got to hang on to that leg. 
Is Moore going to hold him off? We're down to two seconds. One second. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, hold on, though. Brett. Both coaches are putting their arms up. Does yeah, that mean they got so, a question? Or so, so Coach Abby here is definitely uh, uh, going to argue that Gatchel had control. Uh, and that's going to be why he's going to his second official here. Both officials were conferring there uh, as well. Annie. The two points have been awarded to Allen East. We are moving into <laughs> overtime. So, so Coach, Coach Abby got what he wanted. Now you see Wayne Trace coaches arguing that no, there was yeah. no control. So once he conferred to his second ref and two was awarded, it's going, I don't think that's going to go back now. So I think we are going to go into overtime. So this will be our first overtime championship match. That's right. The discussion continues, though. They are they're still talking. So, yeah, they, they, they're sticking with the two, so now we are going to overtime. And I think that was probably the right call, uh, especially on the way that Moore received his two earlier on, where I think that was a little questionable. So we'll let him decide it here in overtime with a minute period overtime. Of course, remember, the first point wins it here. Both guys, of course, know that. And definitely have that on their minds. Yeah, so there's a minute overtime. Uh, first point scored wins. If no one scores, then there's two sets of 30 seconds, uh, which kind of changes things up a little bit here. So, Oh, Gatchel's trying not to let them be held. Wayne Trace coaches are on their feet. Oh, my goodness. If he can Whoa. get the no, no, no call yet, still battling. We're down to 30 seconds, less than 30. It's a good scramble by uh, Gatchel to not give up the two. Moore was in pretty deep and almost had it. Both of them really using their legs. You see that right now with Gatchel. 15 seconds, almost to 10. Nothing yet. Almost five. Wayne Trace thinks he should have, the Wayne Trace coaches think he should have some points. We are at zero. And we're going into a second overtime, which you say now and is a different right. style. And once again, uh, <laughs> Wayne Trace's coach is arguing that they had two. So we see uh, Wayne Trace more there on the, on the mat. I'm wondering if he so, thinks yeah, he I also th had well, a point. I think he's got, I think got they've injury. called injury time, yeah, so. No, something with his shoulder here. We've got a trainer out there. So this is a tough call at this point. Um, this is a tough call at this point. What happens here? We're supposed to go into another overtime. He's got a shoulder injury. Uh, if if he loses, if he can't do it, is he? He has to so, lose by default. Yeah. Here? So he, if he can't wrestle, he would medically default. Uh, right now, they get uh, basically five minutes of uh, injury time to make that decision. If he can, then what happens is there's two sets of 30 seconds. Uh, one guy chooses. Uh, down or top for 30 seconds and then the other guy must also do the down or top so so a little different than that one minute so there there's going to be 30 seconds here where Gatchel's down uh, and points will be awarded either way and but it still is not over because there will be another 30 seconds where more will then have to be down okay right at that Gatchel was on it more we don't know anything about his shoulder but he is wrestling here and we are at 20 seconds now, the only way we don't go to the other 30 seconds is if he would happen to pin him. Then it is over. And we see the official got his arm going. So at this point, what happens is uh, Gatchel's going to get the reversal and the three set of back points. Okay, so he's up by five. However, it's not technically over because now there's going to be another 30 seconds where Moore's down. So the score now is 
That was a big overtime period for Gatchel. Very big, yeah. This is going to be real tough for Moore. He's got to not only get a reversal, but also three back points as well to or pin him. That's the only way he can win this now. So you have basically the best that could happen for, uh, besides pinning him for Gatchel, happened that, that first overtime period. So all he has to do is basically ride him out and uh, he'll, he'll collect the win here. And we are down to 15 seconds left. And that's what we kind of see him doing at this point. So Gatchel will end up uh, winning, uh, but a, a good match. It, uh, we, we haven't really had too many close ones today, and this was another close one. So this is one where the score doesn't tell the complete story. Right. Gatchel is your sectional champion with a score of 9-4 to four over Sam Moore of Wayne Trey. Certainly hoping Sam's shoulder is doing okay, so he'll be ready to go next week for districts. These two are heading to Troy next week along with Riss Miller of Coldwater and Schroeder of Columbus Grove. We are moving straight into the 175 pound weight class for this championship round. It's Kyle Lanthrop, a junior from Columbus Grove, against Nathan Osborne, also a junior from Wayne Trace. Yeah, so again, this is another one of those weight classes where the fourth seed and third seed knocked off the first and second seed. So. A uh, couple wins earlier today for those two guys to get themselves into the championship match. The other two from the 175 pound weight class heading to districts next week are the number one and number two seeds. That's Yunker from Parkway and Boyer from Lincoln View. They're over on the third place match right now as our focus is on the championship round. Lanthrop is with the red uh, strap around his ankle, Osborne with the green. Yeah, and I think this is our first uh, first match for Columbus Grove to have a, a championship uh, mat, uh, wrestler out here. Yeah, I think you're right. They have had several. Um, oh, actually, we did have, we should have had uh, Grove against Alan East, Cade Wireman. That's right. That one didn't happen. But they've had several that have made it into the uh, third to fourth place match. So they definitely got a lot. They're still quite alive in the next part of the tournament. Well, and that's what we talked about, I think, earlier in the broadcast of uh, them uh, winning the NWC and beating Allen East, and that's what it is. They just have a solid all-around team. Maybe not necessarily a bunch of champions, but uh, a bunch of placers, which tournament-wise, that, that goes a long ways for points. Well, really it does. You know, coaching strategy to get those points. Everybody wants to get the win, but figuring out how to get the overall team right. strategy is, is a great thing. 175-pound weight class, number four seed, Lathra. Kyle Lathrop of Columbus Grove versus number three seed Nathan Osborne of Wayne Trace. 0-0, 30 seconds to go in the first period. Yeah, and this is, uh, we've seen quite a few Allen East guys, but we've also seen a lot of Wayne Trace guys sure in these have. championship yes. matches. Yeah, the, the Wayne Trace coaches probably have some pretty warm seats at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those where, again, they, they don't necessarily maybe wrestle around this area as much. Uh, so we don't see him a lot, but uh, they might they might be up there point wise too with your Allen East and uh, your uh, Grove for the sectional title. Ten seconds left to go in the first period. We are still at zero zero, almost out of bounds, but not quite. Keeping the action going. And almost a two, but nothing. So time will run out with zero zero. Flips to green. That means that Osborne will make the decision. Was I correct on that? Flip to green, uh, so yeah, Osborne yep. made the decision? Yeah. yeah. I grew up in <laughs> Iowa, folks, but I was not a wrestler, and I was a never wrestling coach, so a wrestling fan can only take you so, so far. Yeah, so I think, yeah, it's, it was his decision. He deferred, and then Grove chose down is what ended up happening. So he'll have a period or choice third period. So Grove with the quick escape to go up 1-0 now. Just three more matches to go after this one. This is the 175 pound weight class. I want to remind you that this event's presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. This event on WOSN, I should say. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 
Hey, what questions do you have about life, about God, about things happening in the community? Send your discussion ideas to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Your ideas might just make it on TV with our program that features local pastors from this area. It's Life Questions at WTLW.com. 3-0 now our score. One minute left in the second period. Yeah, Kyle uh, got a good good ankle pick there to get a takedown to go up 3-0. And he's trying to stay in control here with about a minute left in period two. You know, we talk about Kyle being a fourth seed, but it's also good to remember that he is wrestling with a team that has had a lot of success. So every day in practice, he's got that opportunity to go against other really good wrestlers. Yeah, and that's a problem sometimes with wrestling rooms. They're, they're smaller than they used to be maybe in years past, but but one like Groves, as you mentioned, with a pretty pretty full wrestling room this year, uh, it definitely, uh, definitely helps out, and obviously it's paying off here as a, he's a fourth seed with a... 3-0 lead here in the for the championship match. 23 seconds left on the clock. It's still 3-0 Columbus Grove over Wayne Trace in the 175 pound weight class. And this is a weight, you know, we mentioned fourth seed, but still with a real good record. Some of these fourth seeds maybe are around the 500 mark or so record wise, but but even as a fourth seed to to beat uh, 32 and 12, that's a good record coming into this. So the official just stopped. I saw him put his hand up to his head, um, indicating what? Yeah, uh, that, yeah that, so that was one of those cautions, uh, potentially type dangerous thing. So he, he just brought it back before any, anyone got hurt, and they just uh, go back in the same positions they were with Grove still on top. And that wraps up the second period. Oh, actually, it doesn't. Whistle called with point one left on the clock. I think they're going into the. Uh, I think they're going right into the third period. Yeah, technically, I think point one was <laughs> it's left. Not like, it's not like football where yeah, they can yeah, finish the play yeah. when they get things started. Over on the third place mat, it's five two right now with the third period starting with that uh, with that group and checking to see who is in the lead. It looks to be. Looks like a green is the, who is that? St. John's, John's is in the John's. lead. Yep. Yeah, St. John's in the lead over there in the third place match. Back to the first place match. We are in the third period. 134 left on the clock. Escape for uh, Wayne Trace. So we're at 3 1 of our score. And actually, I spoke soon, and then I look. It's actually Lincoln View. I, I, so oh. Lincoln View's got a wrestler uh, we here. We apologize in the top for four. that. Yep. We're looking at so many. Uh, so many lines of information right. and trying to keep track of a lot at the same time. I think this is Lincoln View's one guy they had uh, in the in the finals, uh, so they'll have at least one guy going to districts. Just about one minute left to go here in this third period in the 175 pound weight class. Oh, the strength here, trying so hard. Yeah, so Gross trying to get that reversal, and he's actually almost has him pinned there. He's, if you're um, Wayne Trace, you got to be careful. Just about 50 seconds left. It's now 5-1 with Grove with a stronger lead over Wayne Trace. Yeah, and that reversal really, really, I don't want to say seals it, but really makes it tough here if you're Wayne Trace. And you see him kicking him out now, and makes it five two so if you're Wayne Trace you, you gotta go for that throw or a quick takedown and yet another one. So technically with twenty six seconds left it could change quickly here. Yeah, yeah. I'm somewhat surprised maybe Grove uh, decided to let him out but and that was another potentially dangerous so we're going back to neutral and again you can see Wayne Trace's coach tell him listen you're, you're down by three you gotta do something here quick. Eighteen seconds left five two Grove up so, He's trying. Yeah, he went for that throw and it didn't work, but you know, again, that's one of those where you got to try it. So, 7 2 is your current score with less than five seconds in this match. And that decides it. Your state, your sectional champion is Kyle Lathrop. Uh, Kyle Lathrop. Kyle, I apologize. I just heard the announcer say your name. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Congratulations, Kyle, from Columbus Grove. He is your sectional champion and will be the first seed heading into districts next week. Three more matches to go. Next one is 195, 190 pounds. Sorry, almost gave him an extra five. 190 pounds. Shane Ontrop 
of Coldwater and Maddox Jurek of Spencerville. Yeah, and both these guys come in with really good records. Uh, you can hear in the background the announcers, but 37 and four for one. And the other's coming in at uh, 35 and six. So re two real good records here uh, for the, on this championship match. The other two wrestlers who are making their way to uh, districts in this 190 pound weight class. Gavin Schroeder of Columbus Grove and Gage Wireman of Allen East. Those are some names we've heard quite a bit, especially Gage Wireman, mm -hmm. senior Allen East uh, decorated wrestler there. He will be moving on, both of them will be moving on. Yeah, and Wireman, you, again, you can't see it, but he just got the pin, and so he'll go in as a third place uh, into districts. Third place match was over in one minute and 58 seconds if I'm looking at the clock correctly, which they just took off. Yeah. <laughs> but back to the uh, championship match here, which is what our focus is on. Still first period, less than a minute, 0-0 zero, zero between Coldwater and Spencerville. Stalemate's called, so they'll go back to neutral with 50 seconds remaining in period one. We've talked before how the, the style of wrestling changes as the weight class changes, and we are seeing a different style than definitely what we saw at one, you know, 106, you know, 120 even. This is different. Yeah, a lot more, uh, I, I, I'd say maybe not necessarily slower, but more on your feet, not as much maybe quick moves, uh, takedowns, uh, more neutral wrestling and, and kind of waiting for that bigger bigger type throw or, or takedown when, as these guys get... Uh, into the heavier weight classes. No, he's got a leg. So Coldwater going for that trip there and almost, almost got it, but got instead it. Spencerville oh, comes Spencerville. out on top. Whoa. And Two points for Spencerville. That didn't go exactly how our Coldwater planned. No, and he, again, he better be careful here. He doesn't want to give up the pin. And we've got five seconds left, but Coldwater's managed and to hold off, but three back points there. And uh, no, no loss of control uh, for Spencerville. Almost loss of control. You can see Coldwater arguing one to try to get a loss of control, which would give him one point, but I don't think he's going to give that to him. 5 0 is our score now as we enter the second period. That was a big change toward the end of that period. Yeah, it, it, was, it went from Coldwater <laughs> almost getting a takedown to uh, Spencerville, not only getting a takedown, but also three back points. Coldwater is the number one seed here. Spencerville is the number two seed. This is the 190 pound weight class. And again, quite a few guys in this weight class. I want to say. Oh, that was. Almost another. Oh, so, well, got two so, points. Yep, a two, two reversal. So puts it five to two now. And yeah, we're we're now starting to get it's that top and bottom parts of the weight classes. All the middle ones had 10, 11 guys, and now we're back to this weight class had eight. So uh, about half of the field is going to be making it to sectionals. And. So. So now we have uh, Coldwater going for the pin, and, and uh, he's got his three back points, which ties it up. Now he's just going for a for the pin if he can. One minute, one fifteen actually left on the clock here. He's got the arm. You see, I see one shoulder down. I don't know if the second shoulder's down. Now is it hit with him yeah, his legs? So he's he's, he's got up. it pretty tight here, but uh, he's real close to that pin. But that right shoulder just up and good fight from Spencerville to not, not give it up and work back to his belly. So we got less than uh, 50 seconds, almost 45 seconds left in the clock and we have a tie match as we get close to the end of the second quarter, but still lots of time in the second quarter, 40 seconds. Yeah, yeah. This is where, uh, you know, Spencerville was fighting, didn't give up the pin and, and uh, keeps it tied. And this is another one of those matches where that third period, uh, a choice is gonna come into play and be pretty important. Coldwater's trying to get one more turn here and some more back, but again, good fight by, <laughs> and just like that, a and reversal. Like that. Just like that, we got 15 seconds left in the period. Coldwater fighting it. So as Coldwater was going for what we thought another set of back points, reversal and back points instead for Spencerville. 
Down to five seconds. It's seven five right now. Spencerville. And he'll get another three back points, so he goes up now ten to five into the period three. That just goes to show you how rapidly things right. can switch. Yeah, I, th I think we, we thought we were almost getting ready to <laughs> give some back points for Coldwater and, and good uh, good fight there by uh, uh, Jerick from Spencerville. So the score is 10-5, but I'm not going to make any predictions based on what we just saw in that last period. It's definitely went back and forth. We've had uh, three sets of five-point moves to get us to the 10-5. And here it looks go. like what can Jerick. be another five-point move and possibly even a pin because there's a lot of time left so you got to be careful if you're if you're cold water and, and there that's it is it. is that our second pin only our uh, second yeah, pin yeah. of the, we of have the not many pins oh, in the finals, the finals. Yeah. yep maddox jurek of spencerville gets the win with a pin he is your sectional champion the junior from spencerville We'll be right back for the final two matches. You're watching the Division Three Sectional Wrestling Finals right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Division Three Sectional Wrestling Finals. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 215 pound weight class brings us the number one seed, AJ Schaefer of Columbus Grove, and the number two seed, Will Fox of Coldwater. Yeah, there were uh, two matches I really had circled that were I thought were gonna be good ones today. The one was the Miller match, with Miller and Kesson match. Which was, which that was a great match. Really <laughs> good match, really good match. And, and this was the other one, the uh, 215 match here with Schaefer and Fox. Uh, only weight class where we had, both guys are state qualifiers. So these guys have some experience, they're both seniors. Uh, both have been to Columbus, both have been district qualifiers, district placers, so I think high expectations for both of these guys in this in this match. A.J. Schaefer, both of these guys are seniors like you said. A.J. Schaefer 24 and 2 coming into sectionals, Fox 35 and 3. Yeah, last year Schaefer was, uh, got second at districts at 215 pounds to get himself to state. And uh, Fox got third at uh, 285 pounds to get himself to the state. So uh, Fo Fox actually has made a made a drop down a weight class. He was a heavyweight last year. So top four moving on into districts. The other two from this weight class are Cox of Ottawa Glandorf and Johnson of Spencerville. Then the top four in districts move on to state. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and I'm I'm guessing uh, Fox is. Probably thinking, you know, if I can drop down to 215 and avoid uh, Eli from Alanis at heavyweight, uh, you know, good, good decision. Not laughing at you, Eli. Right, we just right. know you are a tough competitor. Right, right. So, I mean, I think a good move by Fox if, if, if it didn't take much to get down to the 215-pound weight class. Well, 285 to 215, that's, uh, okay, I'm a woman in my 40s. We would love to drop that <laughs> much weight. A lot of us would. Well, Maybe not me, yeah. but a lot of people would. <laughs> well, and a lot of these... Uh, the, a lot of guys at the heavyweight are, are some of the smaller heavyweights. Um, so, he, you know, he might have only been weighing 225 or 230 and thought, you know what, what let's lose a little weight here and get down to the 215 pound weight class. That's true. I didn't think about the fact he doesn't have to weigh 285 right, to, right, 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 to right, actually yeah. de wrestle that. He just has to weigh, make sure he's higher than the 215. Right. Yeah. All right, well, we are at the end of the first period, and it is 0-0 right now between Schaefer of Columbus Grove and Fox of Coldwater. Coldwater is orange. Schaefer is not orange, except his hair. I think he's got that red hair going. I won't yeah. call it orange. <laughs> My grandson has uh, red hair, but he used to tell me it was orange. Trying for the leg, didn't get the leg, but there's a point for an escape. For growth. Yeah, and I feel like this is going to be one that every every point's going to really play a part in this final uh, score here. So, so just one zero right now, but but that's one that I, I think I think we could see see it being a close two three a two to three type match or one to two type match. So less than one thirty to go here in period two. This is the two fifteen pound weight class. Just one more match left in this. Division three sectional wrestling finals here at LCC. Just 
Jackson, as we mentioned, uh, it's holding true, you know, a lot, lot, lot more on your feet, neutral wrestling than uh, some of the lower weights. So y you see a lot of lower scores and, and a lot of times in these bigger weight classes, you see either low scores or pins, one or the other. So Fox lunged toward him, Schaefer taking advantage of that, um, jumping out of the way and then grabbing him while he's down. Yeah, he was trying to get that takedown there. Uh, and uh, good, uh, good scramble there by Schaefer to, to keep it neutral. 50 seconds, less than 50 seconds here in the second period. Just want to remind you that there's no admission fee for you to watch this match, but there is a cost for WOSN to broadcast it for you. Your opportunity to say thanks for our broadcast of tournaments just like this one is happening right now. Would you make a financial gift in any size? Your donation stays local and is used to continue broadcasting your local high school athletes. Go to WTLW.com forward slash donate anytime. In fact, our spring funding campaign begins in March, continues through May. We're aiming to raise $50,000 and your donation definitely is a help. 12 seconds left to go in period two and we are still at one nothing. Yeah, almost a throw there to gets a takedown, but they were out of bounds, so still neutral. So again, this third period is going to play a real important part here. Obviously, Coolwater is going to be choosing down this period to try to get their point mm. back and tie it back up. So it is two minutes left in this match, assuming we don't go into overtime, starting period three. So Coldwater going down. We've seen it before where the person on top sometimes just lets him out, but I'm thinking that's not going to be the case here. Or do you think yeah, that Grove if, wants to get back into the uh, neutral no, if, position? No, if I'm Grove, I'm going to try to hold him down as long as I can and, and just see what happens here. Uh, you're up by one, and if you can work, you know, from the top position and and, and get away with a 1-0 uh, oh, almost win, you're good. But it's going to be it's, a, it's going to be a tough task for uh, Grove to be able to hold him down the entire period as you. See Coldwater almost get his point. Yeah, almost got out there, and then Schaefer just grabbed his grabbed his wrist, I think. Yeah, kept control, almost lost that control to get to put us neutral, but we're still uh, in, going down, back down with Coldwater uh, in the down position. Grove in the top, up one zero. Oh, the, oh, there he gets his guts the ankle. No takedown there. Oh, and this is uh oh, this and this is probably gonna be a pin here for. Grove, because once, once they get him turned, it's hard to come up from that. Both officials and watching, it. and there you go. It goes from one nothing to a pin. AJ Schaefer, the senior from Columbus Grove, is your sectional champion at the 215 pound weight class. Here we go. This is the last match, and they are ready to go. I can see it in Eli right now. Eli Kirby from Allen East. 40 and one record versus Troy Milligan of Coldwater. Trying to get that takedown there. Two points. Yep, there's the takedown, and again, once once he gets those takedowns, and if he can get him turned, this could be over really quick here. Eli, such a strong wrestler, know that name very well here in Allen East. And, and just like that, it. it's over. 36 seconds to the pin. There's your sectional champion, Eli Kerbley from Allen East. And, and, and yeah, he's he, fourth last year at state, and I know this year he's ha got higher expectations. He's he's not wanting to settle for anything less than state champion, so he's on his way right now. Well, I watched him when he, he was just jumping all around there. He was ready to go. He was prepared. He knew what he was going to do. He had a plan, and, and he executed it. Well, folks, we executed our entire thing, and that's the end of our sectional tournament. Uh, we are so grateful that you took the time to watch this. Brady, thank you for spending some more time with us with your wrestling knowledge. Yep, good day, good afternoon of wrestling. So hopefully all these guys that are making it to districts next week at Troy uh, can punch their ticket on for another week at, at the state tournament That's as right. Well. We will be keeping an eye on all of our local competitors all the way to the state tournament. Wrestling uh, is a great thing in Northwest Ohio, and we're grateful to be able to cover it. Well, that's going to wrap it up for our broadcast here at the Division Three Sectional Wrestling Finals. One more reminder, our event was presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Over Brady Overholt, Cassidy Driscoll, Stephen McNeil, and Nick Fraley, I'm Jennifer Beck, and we want to say thank you for joining us for this wrestling broadcast on WOSN.